88 films. Yeah. We're back. Hello. We're wearing, Hit that same, we're wearing the same clothes as the last podcast. Judge us. Judge me. What's Somebody said we wear the same outfit. All right, we're back. We got a special guest. Well, he's always a guest, but he's always in back of the camera. Now we have him in front of the camera. Rizzy Rob. Rab. What's good, y'all? Press it. You got to sound it. Sound it off. Uh, there it is. There, there it is. is. See? Hit that shit. You're on the other side hey. of it. Hey. <laughs> hey. Hey. <laughs> no pause. Let's get it. All right, All right, Rob. We have a lot of questions for you. What's good? Are you nervous? Nah. I, I, I did the, the one with Lani, so I noticed that I was speaking a little fast. So on this one, I'm going to take it slow. Yeah, I watched the whole thing, and I feel like... Uh, they kind of brought you in as like a guest to what they were talking about. So mm. I kind of wanted to bring you on as a guest of like what you're all about. Um, pretty simple. Let's get it started. Uh, how and when did you get into content creation? Um, so I think the first time I did anything was uh, back in like 2007. Um, I uploaded a video to YouTube. It's still on there. It's like me going to Irwindale and racing. And uh, I had like a, I was working at Best Buy and I had like a little like point and shoot camera and I had a little tripod. I wrapped it around the, uh, the driver's seat uh-huh. and then I had my homie outside. So there was a camera inside, a camera outside. And then it was like an old school, like uh, one of those, like whatever, the camcorders or whatever. Yeah. And uh, I uploaded it to my computer. I, I used Movie Maker and um, that was my first video I uploaded to YouTube back in 07 so i just did it for the lols i did it because i wanted to show up on my myspace page uh-huh. and i was like yo i want this to be sick you know yeah. and then that was the first time i actually did something on my own uh-huh. and then i wish i would have kept up with it i ended up working at like verizon for a while um and then after verizon it was best buy it was best buy t-mobile verizon and after verizon um i had a little like entrepreneur like business and that's when i actually started doing stuff for the business um, and then I was lucky to like people like saw my work and stuff and I did t- stuff for the homies. And then my big break was when I went on a uh, tour with Cartel Music and Luis Serra Conriquez. So they're the ones that, that said, yo, we need a van. So they rented out the van and me. I was a part of the bundle. And then we went on a whole <laughs> tour for like six months. It was pretty sick, bro. It was, it was dope, dope experience. Um, late nights, early mornings. So that stuff was uh, super crazy, but uh, that was pretty dope. So when was that? That was 2001. Oh, shit. When, when you I, went on tour? When I went on tour with Luis. Remember, when I, remember I yeah. was wearing my Supremes? So that's another yeah. thing. So on tour. 2001? 2000, 2000, no, sorry. 2011? 2021. Oh, okay. I was just like, what? 2021. Right. How'd you meet him? Uh, how did I meet him? So mm-hmm. through our through the through our little like business venture we had, uh-huh. uh, we met those guys. Uh, we met them. My my business partners met, met them at a studio like up north. Okay. And then um, when Luis w- first got his visa, uh, they were staying in Wilmington. So we pulled up in Wilmington and we had like a little meeting, and they were like, "Yo, like we need your cameras. Like we need you to do a recap video." I wanted to, like, I had pitched them the idea to do, like, vlogs and YouTube stuff because mm-hmm. that's kind of what I'm into. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were like, yeah, you could do that, but we also need you to do pictures and recap. And I said, bet, I could do I could do all that. And then they were like, yo, we need the van, too. So it was, like, a big bundle that we bundled them up with. And um, we met them. Through, that's how I met them. And then uh, ever since then, like, for that time, I think it was, like, four to five months, like, we were just on the road, like, we went to Chicago, New York, fucking uh, the Midwest. Uh, what are those little state called? Like Wisconsin. Like we were all, we were all over the place. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. Going back to the 20 when we met, were you shooting content already or not? Yet? Nah. So right there. So what happened was, unfortunately, like, you know, no one ever knew that content was going to be a thing, you know. Yeah. And um, well, I was working at my job at Verizon and T-Mobile and they were paying pretty good. So it's like I never really ventured off. Like, I never really went back into the content stuff until I became an entrepreneur, had my own business. And then that's when I saw, like, yo, this, oh, this, these, these cameras or whatever. Like, you could get side gigs and yeah. you could get, like, I can make this my full-time job versus, like, my other stuff I had going on. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just one of those things where, like, that's when I noticed, like, when people started asking me questions um, about, like, content, about, like, YouTube, about Instagram, about TikTok and stuff like that. That's when I knew. I was like, yo, I can make this a business. I could actually help people, like, obviously, your your business. Um, and I could bring some kind of value with, like, 
you know, the vlogs and stuff like that. And especially now with the podcast, I feel like that's like big at the moment. Yeah. So I think it's one of those things. It's understanding what what's trending, understanding what's working and understanding how people are consuming content and yeah. being able to help businesses like yourself um, achieve like, you know, like we see it here all the time when. Customers come and say like, yo, I watch the podcast. I love what you guys are talking about. Like to me, that's that's dope. Like yeah. I feel like, damn, that's sick. Like, yeah. but um, I feel like it's, it's bringing that value towards someone's business and having, you know, your consumers like appreciate that. Yeah. I think to me, that's the biggest like flex. Um, so what year did you like re-pick up the camera with your venture and you were like, oh, all this shit can be shot? Um, let me see. The When did I pick up the camera? It was probably 20, 2000 and maybe 17, 2018, something like that. That's when I started like getting back into it. I've always kept the camera around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I've always been a Sony guy. So I've always had like a little Sony. The one that I gave the homie was a 5100. That was back in like 2016 I purchased it. So I always okay. had like the niche. Yeah, I always had like the tech side of me. But um, when I became an entrepreneur, like we, we said, all right, fuck it, like three thousand dollar cameras, you yeah, know, man. like let's go hard, bro. Like if you're gonna do something, like just do it right. I guess you could say. No, yeah, I think I've noticed with like the way we've worked together for the last almost two years, mm -hmm. that you take your craft really serious, and I think that's what inspires me about you. That like I always say, like yo, people need to work at this. Like you're like, nah, like don't do it this way. Like you have to do it this way, and I, and I get it. But you're also open to ideas, but. Like you said, you take like you're like you want the best quality on your stuff, and obviously you 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 got to spend it to do it, you know. No, yeah, for sure. That and then it's also having like uh, like mentors like Nigel, mm -hmm. like where like we hit each other's up, we ch we hit each other up like at one o'clock in the morning, and we just talk about content, yeah. like new styles that are coming out, this cinematic, they like just different things that like other nerds probably don't think about, but. It's funny because I, I see like I see I see a lot more movies now and then I see like content and like there's certain things that make you feel a certain way. Like yeah. the way someone does something like, yo, that's tight. Yeah. And sometimes I want to recreate that and make it my own. Yeah. And I go back to like watching like the round two vlog, the round two vlogs and stuff like that. And it's like those vlogs gave you a certain feeling, you yeah. know, yeah. and that's what I try to recreate here with you guys. And then uh, when it comes to podcasting, like I watch, you know, podcasters and it's like, OK, I see what people do and how they do like certain edits or whatever. And I just take those little things and make it my own. So I feel like being a student, a fan of like other people's content can also help you, you know, create your own content. No, yeah. Going yeah. back to the movies thing, it's like a lot of people are like I'm like a movie junkie. Um, but I tell them, like, for me, a movie is like more than just a movie, you know, like how shit is shot, how, like, how vibrant it is. I pay attention to all the little things or, like, like, the attention to detail. Like, I posted the Rakeem for a Dream yesterday, um, and it was, like, how she had a... Like, I read that she had, like, a body cam on her and then the way it was shot, and it was, like, the scene. It was, like, it's a pretty graphic scene, but, like, just, like, the the nerd about me wanted to see, like, how it was shot, like, seeing her that, like the pain in her face and stuff like that. And that's just her doing a really good job. Um, but a lot of people don't go deep into that detail. They're like, Oh, it's just a movie. But what people don't know is like a movie is like, it's permanent, you know, like it's, and if going back to that, like there's a good movie that you guys should watch called Babylon. And there's a scene where she's just like, yo, we're in the 1920, we're in 1929. But she's like, but you're going to be here 2000. This movie's here forever. Like this, what you felt during this, it's going to be here forever. So it goes back to shooting content. It's like people, I go back to the round two stuff and I'm just like, oh shit. Like I remember when this was going on and it's cool to go back and see what was hot at that time or how you were buying stuff. No, yeah, exactly. And then like, I, I also see like all the new stuff that comes out and I see different people do stuff and I, I get pumped up, bro. Like when I see like, like the homies from D1, they set up their bike cam. I'm yeah. like, sick. <laughs> they got a bike cam. Yeah. Like now we're going to see all the crazy shit that goes in there. Cause I'm sure, you know, shit gets kind of yeah. crazy or whatever. So I, I, when I see other people do stuff, it's like dope. Like now we're going to see that, you know, that part of their business. So yeah. I also like I'm not like a hater at all. Like anytime I see someone do something, it's like sick. Yeah. You use it um, like as like you said, with everything else, you study it and like you're genuinely into it. So you're not just looking at it like, oh, like whatever, like you take it into account. And if there's something 
you like i'm sure you're inspired by that too and you're just kind of like oh shit like, exactly yeah. like that's hard even just um yeah going back to what both of y'all said like like being a nerd about the things you do and like i think it's also like respecting what you do because there's people as we've all seen it that they just kind of try things and they don't give it their all and you can kind of tell when somebody kind of just is in it for like just whatever but i think that that's like another reason why like we've been able to work so well together because you're kind of like how we are in the sense of where we're, we genuinely love what we do right and right. like that it shows in in the production and everything that you have that you do for us too you know what i'm saying and Not everything yet. even the stuff you do outside like i don't know if you could talk about it but like the other products that you're working on and everything you know what i'm saying like it shows that you're you're genuine about it and like you want to get it down not just because you want it to look good but because you genuinely fuck it fuck with it you know? no yeah exactly and then i also think like the whole being consistent part like that's huge yeah. and i remember like when we first started like chris was like oh you know one video every two weeks and i was like nah <laughs> one video every week no matter what and then like i think chris would still even like in the beginning if i would have said like oh i missed a video chris probably wouldn't have cared you know but for me like it's a thing like i take a lot of pride and like not missing an upload. I don't, I've never missed an upload. We've uploaded um, on the pod like twice a week for for a while. This week was twice a week. So it's like, to me, like that stuff, bro, like that just shows like, yo, like we're on, you yeah. know, like that the business is on, that you guys are relevant in your, in your, in your space and that you guys are willing to invest into your business via like my, my the, production. The so, marketing. Yeah. Yeah. So to me, like I, that, to me, that's the biggest flex, bro. Like being consistent you know, being relevant and just coming to work every single day, knowing that like, yo, we're going to fucking do this. We're going to hammer down. We're going to do the content. And uh, just you guys allowing me to come in here and just, you know, run my plays, like do whatever I want. Like, I think that's dope as fuck. Yeah. Um, so you you do us, but then you also do your cousin, uh, Rafa, which we yeah. sponsor. Right, so right, how, right. how can you tell us like how that came about? Like yeah. So, so Ra Rafa was fighting here, um, when he was, uh, when he was like younger, like 21, 22 ish. And he had a, he had a, a tourist visa. And that's when like, that's when I was still like in at Verizon and stuff like that. And then, um, he stopped fighting for a while and then COVID hit. So that kind of like backtracked them. And then when I started doing content, like I would tell him like, hey bro, I don't see you posting anything on Instagram. I don't see you doing any videos. Like what's up with you? And then um, during COVID, I believe he fought once and then 2021 he fought again. But then when they when they opened, when they started opening everything up, um, he called me. He's like, hey cuz, like remember all that content you were talking about? Like I'm ready. Yeah. And that was the first fight that I went to, the TJ fight. And the funny part was like, I thought it was gonna go into like a little hole in the wall spot and like it was gonna be like two dudes watching. Like, yeah, <laughs> I thought it was, I thought the worst, bro. Um, but uh, luckily it was at like this, this, uh, uh, is a plaza de toros, like a, like, you know, where they fight the toros and shit. No shit. But they had a whole big ass production with the zone and the ring and the cameras. And I was just like, yo, this is real. This deal. shit's real. Yeah. Like, yeah. this ain't no baby bag bullshit, you know? And I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> like, this is, this is dope. So then once I seen that, like, yo, he's coming out on TV, like he's on the zone or whatever, um, that like they're, the promoter he works with, Zanfer, like they actually invest money into him. I was just like, yo, like this guy is marketable. Like he's a clean cut guy. He, um, you know, he's married, doesn't drink. He, he lives in it where he lives. It's like a facility. His dad built it for him. Shout out to his dad. Um, the first, the first floor is like a parking structure. Ten cars fit right there. The second floor is a ring. The third floor is an apartment where people could stay at. Like that's where I stay at. And then the fourth floor is his, oh, where shit. he stays with his family. And like his family, his dad is dedicated, like fully committed. Like he is like the real sponsor yeah. because he's the one fucking paying for everything pretty much. Um, but once I seen like, yo, this guy's real. Like my, th like he's actually committed, committed. That's when I was like, all right, bet I'm in. Yeah. Because it's it, for me, like when someone doesn't want it, it's mm -hmm. very hard, you know, but yeah. for someone like him, like he's able to have access to all these, like these things or whatever, his facility to me, it's like, all right, like he's committed, he's down, he's a clean cut dude. Like I could help him. At, at, at first, when I had first told him about sponsors, his dad was like, nah, like, we don't need no sponsors. I'm like, yo, bro, like, this yeah. is, like, this, tomorrow's, I, I tell him all the time, tomorrow's not promised, bro. If you lose a fight, then your, your stamina, your, 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 your steam or whatever, you're going to lose it. Yeah. So I tell him, like, look, every fight is, is it's, it, you know, with your sponsors, you're able to get a little bit of bread. 
And that's kind of what I brought to him as far as like, yo, the USA sponsors and stuff like that. So um, I opened his eyes with that. And then that's how like, like through that money, he's able to pay my flight and like my hotel or whatever. Yeah. And then like, um, he's able to pay me a little bit of shit or a little yeah. bit of money or whatever. But it's one of those things where like, I, 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 I decided to help him like selflessly because I knew like he's good. Like I could market him, you yeah. know, it's very easy to market someone like that. Um, but yeah, shout out to all you, shout out to you guys for sponsoring him. Um, shout out to fucking all the USA sponsors. Shout out to you guys. And, uh, it's one of those things, bro, where like, like I really believe in him yeah. because of his dedication. He's super, like, he's just religious. He's dedicated. And I believe that he will be a champion. Yeah. So for those, stay tuned, bro. Yeah. You guys are going to go to a fight and it's going to be dope. Yeah. For That's those hard. who don't know, what's his record right now? What happened? His for record. The, what's his record? Right uh, now? He's 22 and 0. But so I've been with them for like four or five fights or six fights. So some fights when the, they fall out or whatever mm -hmm. and um, he ends up fighting, he ends up winning, but they don't qualify. Like they don't count. Yeah. Mm. So he's really like 26, 28 and 0. But mm. in reality, his he's, real record is 22 and 0. The yeah. professional is 22 and 0. 22 yeah. and 0, yeah. So you said he's coming to the States soon, right? So what they told me is one more big fight in Guadalajara. After the big fight in Guadalajara, he will be here in the States. I'm pushing and I'm telling him, like, I really want I really want it to be done around this time next, next year. year. Because this time next year, there's no sports. Yeah. And yeah. I don't want to compete, like, you know, NBA, NBA finals, or football yeah. or blah, blah, blah. Like, I, oh. I've, I'm very strategic. I don't yeah. know if you guys noticed that. Yeah. But everything yeah. that I do, I'm very, very strategic. So I told him, I was like, bro, yeah. this time next year, L.A. Yeah. And yeah. Pe not only people are going to watch, but because there's nothing on but our if our crowd of crowd of friends or whatever, I could push people to go, you know. Yeah. Especially with Ralphie and like yeah. all those homies or whatever. Yes. I know they'll pull up. I know the the, the syndicate customers. Shout out to you. <laughs> shout out to all the syndicate customers that come and fuck with me genuinely with my cousin or with, with the work I do. That's pretty dope. Um, but yeah, so hopefully this time next year, uh, LA fight Carson uh, downtown anywhere around here. Uh, that's what I'm hoping for. That's what I'm shooting for. All so, right. No, that's dope. <laughs> Bro, it's just crazy, like, even just hearing about it because it's, like, just what you do for him and what you do for us are two completely separate things, but you tie them in together because of what you do, you know what I'm saying? So, no, yeah, and like, going back to the strategy thing, yeah. it's funny because you're always just like, oh, we got to drop it at this time, at this time. From the start, you're like, oh, yeah. like, let me figure out what dates and what times, and that's why we shoot Thursdays, Mondays, and then... uh saturdays i think yeah right yeah. no yeah and and that that's kind of how, how i always like looked at mm. the world or whatever like mm. you have to be strategic you can't just like oh today we're just gonna do this like nah like even sometimes i i, I come in i try to tell you guys like especially with the pod oh talk about this talk about that like let's not forget about these <laughs> bullet Little points topics, so you yeah. know we cover them but mm -hmm. it's just one of those things about like just caring you know like i care about this I want this to be the best podcast possible, so don't forget to talk about this stuff. So No, yeah, you told me about, like, the bullet points are at the start, then you bleed into the end. No, yeah, it's definitely a lot of strategy, and same thing with, like, the effort you put on. Like, people don't see the hours, and you're sending me pictures of your, your office, which is crazy. Your office is nah, sick. Yeah, and you know what, bro? <laughs> that's funny. Like, that to me, like, I, I don't think people realize how long it takes to edit a podcast. It takes fuck. It's long bro Not especially yet. with yeah. all the sourcing the pictures cropping them putting them where they have to go hitting you guys up hey what's up bro? i need this pic i can't find this i can't find that i think it's funny or whatever but like it, i think it's funny how it literally takes hours for someone to just consume it like in an hour yeah you know it's kind of like the cooking thing like you, yeah. you take three four five hours cooking you eat it in 15 minutes 15 Bang. minutes and you gotta wash dishes yeah, yeah. No, no, but it, no, it's like um, same thing like making the movies. It's like they spend years on movies and then it's like, OK, I just watched the three hour movie. Sick. <laughs> yeah, for something that took so long. That's fucking nuts. But no, it's true. Even people, the setups that you do. And I think it's dope that you you shoot them every week, like how you have the fast forward that you show you setting this up because, bro, that that takes time, too. Like, it's not something that it just happens on its own. Like everything, there is more to it than what meets the eye. No, and then you continue learning. It's just like again, you started doing the the um your own reels, your mm -hmm. own TikTok. It's like developing a craft and sticking true to it, but still sticking to your own lane. Uh, like a, what was it? Um, you posted the gym one. Same thing. Like, like you're shooting that one. By the way, you fucking lifted with no spotter, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro, it'd be like that. It's crazy. <laughs> Two plates. You're insane. Nah, yeah, but honestly, bro, like I think it all comes down to like actually, again, actually caring. Like if you go back to the first podcast that we shot. All the cables are all, yeah. you know, all over the place now. Look, they're on nicely, nicely wrapped, and they go straight, straight line that way. So I feel like it's just 
practice and actually caring, bro. No, you know, it's like, like getting better. Like, mm-hmm. uh, like you see the progression. Paying attention to like, all right, cool. How can we fix this? And same thing, we and you go back and forth with like, I tell you like, yo, now I want more customer content. Fuck us. You know, like let's get more customers involved. Um, and the same thing, like the, the cleanliness and uh, even like taking like the, the people telling like, oh, the camera's too low. Yeah. Let's fix that. The, the footage, even the buying cam, like we pay attention to everything. And you're like, you're on the comments responding. And I, I don't think people see that. Wait, I'm on the comments? No, like you respond on like to, from yeah. the store credit. Yeah. Like you'll be like, oh, it'd be like facts, blah, blah, blah. Like, or Damn. like, got you king. I'd be talking in a third person. Yeah. You guys see that? Yeah. It's an interaction though. No, but you're interacting. <laughs> yeah, it makes a difference. I'd be like, oh yeah, we're, we're going to tell Rob to get but on that's it. Like the, but that's like the most important thing. <laughs> yeah. Because it's like pe- the interaction, it makes people feel involved. And they want to be involved because they are involved. But like mm. if you just don't respond to them, it's just kind of like, oh shit. Nah, yeah, yeah. Kinda, yeah. Yeah, so... All right, the cat's out of the bag. I'm the one that responds to all the comments, even though I respond <laughs> to him in third person because I respond like, "Oh yeah, we'll tell Rob to get on it." Yeah. Um, I do. I I take that. I take pride in that because I want to make sure, like, okay, let's see what the people are saying. Let's let's make sure that okay, camera's too low. Bet we'll put it up. Oh, camera's blurry. What happened? Settings fucked, messed up, or whatever. All right, let's fix that. So I feel like those little things, bro. Like I honestly believe. I don't care how big this this thing gets. I will reply to every comment. No, you have to. Because it's yeah. like, bet. Like, whatever. Takes a little bit of time. Boom, boom. Talk to everybody. And then now I know the usernames. Now I know the trolls. Now I know the homies. Mm-hmm. It's cool to see, to put uh, the username, like a face to the username. Yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, you're him. All right, bet. All right. So it's like, I think that's, that's to me, that stuff is dope. No, yeah. Like, I remember one time, a couple months in, not too far, like six, seven months, we're already kind of like deep in. Uh, to me, one of the bigger compliments was, uh, can you get that, man? Um, was Graham hitting me up? Well, he called me and he was just like, "Yo, like I love the YouTube, blah blah blah. Like you guys are killing." It. And he gave me a little bit of pointers, and then I reached out to you, and I'm like, "Yo!" But to me, like a person like Graham reaching out and telling us that he fucks with the way it's shot and stuff like that, that meant a lot to me. So that just was like a credit to your work of him being like, "Oh, who does it?" Blah blah blah. Not like saying like, "Oh, like do a lot better." It was like he was a fan of it. Right, right, right. No, yeah, and even when you told me that, I was even like, yo, sick, you yeah. know? Like, like when, when you get those, like, comments or whatever, whether they're good or bad, um, I take them as, like, you know, positive, like, positive reinforcement and stuff like that. So, like, that's dope to know, to know that, like, he, like, people like that are watching, they enjoy it. Yeah. And to me, that's, all, that's what it's all about, you know? Yeah, it's like you take yeah. the good and the bad, too, because some people can't take the bad criticism right. when they're just uh, like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, for that, like, I, I mean, I just take everything with a grain of salt, yeah. you know? And even when, like, whatever whatever the comments say, like, I don't... No. That doesn't keep me up at night. No, yeah, same. Yeah, same. so, yeah. if you know, even when they said, oh, Rob has a trash fit, I bet. Like, <laughs> I, I honestly I honestly don't believe I know how to dress, bro. You like, really came in uh, wearing a pink shirt with orange lobsters. So I gotta hey, say bro. <laughs> I felt like I was him that day. That's like, all I'm going to be him, you know? And that's it, you know? And I honestly don't care, bro. How about the size 13 slides? What about them? <laughs> hey, why were you wearing size 13 slides? That was the last ones. And I had t- uh, my toe was busted. And they said, oh, we only got 13. I said, bet, run it. Oh, my God. I see people do that. worse. Yeah. yeah. You're fair. right. You're right. All right. Serious question. <laughs> when you reached out to me for the opening party, you remember when you're like, oh, like, what's going on? And I just said, pull up. What you think? Because I literally just responded, pull up. Uh, I was like... I don't know. I was like, all right, let me just take my camera and see what's up. You know, yeah. like, I wanted to start recording when it was blank. Yeah, no, yeah, I remember. And, and it was blank, and I was like, yo, I want to start recording now. Yeah. Because I want to record everything, you yeah. know? Like, so I was just like, ah, oh, I, I, I personally thought, like, yo, it's probably going to be, like, a little trial. They probably want to see how, how I am with everyone, with customers and, 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 and all that good stuff. So I never thought, like... Oh, I got the job. I just thought like, oh, they want to check me out. Yeah. And then I think we did a few videos. And then after that, you're like, all right, just keep, keep coming back, you know? Yeah. And it was like a verbal agreement. Like, we didn't sign a contract or yeah. anything. Like, we were just like, all right, bad. Yeah, like, keep coming back. No, because even like, it was a mystery about opening the store. And you're, hey, I remember you told me you're like, oh, this fool might open his own store, blah, blah, blah. And then you literally just, they essentially took a jump shot. You're like, oh, like, if you do, blah, blah, let me know. And I was, I literally just put pull up. Well, and, and the reason I, uh, the reason I asked you or I told you is because like, I'm very passionate for YouTube content. Yeah. And I knew, like, yo, round two, like, yo, this is fucking the same shit, you know? Yeah. But now I could, like, kind of help out or, like, put my two cents or my mix into it. And um, I thank you guys for giving me the opportunity and, like, letting me just run my own, like, plays. Yeah. Because I like, pretty much just do whatever I want. Like, yeah. I don't really ask you guys for anything anymore. No, yeah. Know? So it's just sometimes we reach out and you're like, yo, don't do this, do that. 
So at that point, did you expect to be this far in, like doing podcasts and all that stuff? Or what? um, not necessarily. Like, but I think everything, like as as you guys have grown, and I think like you guys are just getting started, to be honest. So as the business grows, I think this is only gonna be like bigger. Mm -hmm. And I think for a business, like YouTube content, vlog content, uh, podcast content, TikTok content, it's all part of the game. Yeah. So you have to be doing it. And I think I've heard like certain customers say that like, yo, you guys do everything sick, you know? <laughs> and like, I think that's sick. And I think that like, as this business grows, it's only going to be not only required, I think it, it's already been to that point where if we don't do an hour vlog, people are talking smack. Yeah. If we don't upload, people are not talking smack, but like they disappointed. They almost. expect it. Yeah. They're like, yo, this is, I expect my free content from Cindy yeah. because I enjoy it. Yeah. So even with the 4,000 people that watch or 5,000 people, shout out to all you guys. Um, I personally feel like that's still a lot of people, no, bro. It is. You can't, you can't, you fit can't fit 5,000 people in here at all. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and they, they're, they're, they're watching from different countries, um, different states, I honestly believe that, like, I think what you guys are doing with your business is great. And then me being a part of, like, the production side, like, I'm just happy to be here. No, yeah, and everything's done in-house. I think people forget that because usually they get somebody coming in and doing it. Like, that's why when even I said about the pop-ups, like, what people don't know is it's like, we got to get you out there. We got to do this. And I was just like, bro, pop-ups are, like, low-key really hard because it's like it costs, it costs more money to go and then just make a statement out there and then come back. Um but yeah, like every the, going down back to the content, it's just like what people don't understand. It's just like essentially you're an employee of the store. Like I think people something here are like, oh, it's just their homie shooting, and I'm like, no, this man's a full employee. No, yeah. Well, I do. I run the full shift. Yeah. You know, I get yeah. here, whatever, eight, ten, hours, whatever. Yeah. I, don't, I don't even know what it is, bro. Yeah. But yeah, but even, but even some people bro. don't yeah. understand that like it's not it's not cheap and it's also like for you it's like long hours because even for this last podcast you were like yo like i couldn't get it done because mario's was an hour and a half and then we had the 30 so we split it so what people didn't see is like that's why there was a 30 minute podcast on siren some people were like yo we only got 30 minutes what the fuck <laughs> and but, th but that just that just goes to show how dependent they are from yeah. you guys you know they want that they want the full hour they want you to talk about sneakers they want you to talk about what's going on yeah. in the shop you know anything that we're doing and i think that like us documenting this, like, we don't know where it's going to take us, yeah. right? But, like, at the end of the day, we're always going to be able to go back and look at the videos. Yeah, at right. the end of the day, we're always, wherever, 20, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, I, I, that's one thing I firmly believe, that all our content that we throw up there, we're going to be able to be like, damn, remember this? Remember that? Crazy. No, no it's like, like I said, it's forever. Like, yeah. I would be like, damn, I remember I was mad at this day or, like, did, did this. <laughs> no, but, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then one thing, one thing that's like really good about what you do is how you get us like it's I don't even want to say unfiltered because you just get us on our natural state. I love when people come in and they're like, you guys are actually the same person on videos. And I'm just like, yeah, what do you expect? Like you think we're like LOLing or like like essentially putting up a front. We're literally the same exact person. Or even like when like DC, like DC is just DC, you know, and I can't ask DC to be like, oh, hey, bro, I need you to be super animated on this one. It's like, nah, bro, just do your, run your, run your play, bro. Because at the end of the day, that's who you are. And when people come in, they're like, oh, that's DC. That's how he is. Yeah, there's no scripts to anything that's done. It's literally just naturally us being us. So, yeah. Like, and even like the buy encounter stuff, bro, I just uh, love the fact how you guys are. Because what you see is what you get. No games, no gimmicks, no hey, these are fake shoes or like we're not playing with the customers, bro. Mm -hmm. Like this is it's 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 black and white. This you, you know, store credit is this much, trade is this much, bro. Like you get what you get, you know. Yeah. So I think that like just being you guys, I, I know we could be funny and I know we could like prank people, but I think that like you guys kind of lose a little bit like credibility. Like yeah. oh now they're fucking around with the custies, you know. Like you don't want to do that, you know. I feel like the way we do it. It's like, hey, we show you guys, like, the fakes when they come in. Like, when we give, we show the people, like, the comparisons. This is mm -hmm. the real. This is the fake. And to me, it's just educational purposes, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I feel like um, how we run, like, how we run our content, I feel like it's good for the customers because exactly what they see online is what they're going to get in store. No, yeah. Like I said, that's, like, the biggest compliment I think that we get. The fact that they're like, oh, you guys are exactly the same. Because yeah. it used to happen a lot where some people would come in and, like, the main I would say the main people that were on the show wouldn't be at the store and they would get a second side of it and they'd be like damn like that That's shit's different same. but it's just like here you get what you get you know nah I feel it feel it feel it so what's your favorite part about your job favorite part about my job 
Honestly, bro, just working here, like even Max, I don't even think Max is, gets paid. Does he get, he doesn't get paid. Know. He just pulls up. He know. just pulls up on Sunday. I ain't gonna he lie works. To you, Max works for product. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Max yeah, works for does. product, bro. All right. Yeah. You see, so like just being here, like I just know, like it's gonna be a good day. Yeah. Like regardless of who's here, if if you guys are sick, not sick, whatever. Like even with the customers, I just know, like all right, today's and like it, it, since it's content day, I feel like everyone's just like cool you yeah. know so i think every day coming here is like is dope because it's always funny as you guys know i'm a prankster you know and today and for today's trick i'm gonna make my pin disappear it's an inside joke and like i just what? think it's funny when like i i'm just i just mess around a lot you know mm -hmm. so even if it's with you know with the customers or with like the guys in the back like i just know it's always a good day bro yeah you to be honest prank, yeah. that and then yeah, when the i go prank war champ you're the, so you're prank the real prank or champ. Let's go. No cap. And then when I go back and edit everything, you just laugh. I sit there and laugh, bro. Because yeah. I just think all oh, this shit's funny, you know? The way some Manny might say some funny shit, or I'm, we, the pranks that we play or whatever, like, it's just hilarious. Yeah, and it's funny when people say, like, oh, what do you take out? And you're like, nothing. I, not we, we rarely take out any, I don't take out anything yeah. because there's nothing to take out. There's nothing that we do that's out of pocket. Yeah. There's nothing that we do that, like, is like, you know, we don't mess with each other that bad either, yeah. you know? But it's just one of those things where, like, I think we're real. And I think that's the most important part. So when, even whenever, and you come here any day, and you're going you're gonna to get that same experience. Hopefully. For the most part. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Yeah. You think? Huh? You think? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Yeah. All right. So my huh. question to you now is, out of all the shoes you bought in here, what's a shoe that, or bought in or seen, what's a shoe that you're like, oh, shit, like, that's here? Because this is now here in your side. Because I've never asked you this question, like... Cause we see it all the time, and for us, it's so used to it. But then sometimes I've seen you geek out, and you're like, "Yo, what whoa, the fuck?" Blah. You know what? I think it would have to be. Da, 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 da. No, cause you had those what the dunks, huh? Like yeah. you, those what the dunks you sold them. The they were mine. We sold them here. Yeah. Yeah. So no, not those. Like I want to say, like something that came in that I was just like, "Yo," uh, probably would have to be. Hmm. <laughs> when the homie brought those uh the supreme sbs like just crispy yeah just crispy yeah and, and have a box or whatever but fuck it you know like yeah. they were just so dull. I was like damn those are still good like that's tight yeah because you have your pair that yeah. you thought i offered you 200 dollars for <laughs> bro i don't even know if you're trolling or not but <laughs> apparently they're worth more so apparently, <laughs> apparently. i don't even know I, and that's another thing the i don't fact even that know you take it so literally because one day i was just like yeah 200 store credit and like, you went I home like, i was like damn that, that those things are worth 200 bucks i was like fuck Hey, but How you, the mighty you, have fallen. You know a little bit about shoes for sure, because I mean the ones you you're wearing right now is not like something that everybody has or even knows about. No, you yeah. bought those because of the camera, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So th these are the uh, Sony VX 1000s, I believe. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then um, they were for the for the skaters, like that's a skating camera. Yeah. But as you guys know, I'm a big Sony guy. I've yeah. always been a big Sony guy. So when I was like, oh yeah, Sony camcorder, Sony's, and then like the, you know the little shutter speed yeah. and all that stuff, like. I think like I, I like SBs because they they tell a story, you know, yeah. and like these tell a story like, you know, meet Sony shirt, you know, so NY shirt. Yeah. Um, I see what you just said. The vision, it's bro. one of those <laughs> things bro, where like, I'm just a nerd. <laughs> the bro. camel on camel. And the, whether people, the, the, whether people, crazy. Whether people like, get <laughs> it or not, like, you know. <laughs> It is what it is. And why Sony over anything else? I don't think we asked you that. When it comes to what? Like cameras. Cameras. So uh, just the, 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 the way they capture, like, uh, qu the quality of their videos mm -hmm. has always been on point. And with these cameras, they have this autofocus thing where, like, it captures your, your retina. Mm -hmm. So right now it's focusing on, like, that. And, like, the focus is very, very on point. Yeah. So I've always thought, like, yo, like, fo the focus is big. Um, and like they're easy to use in reality. No, I noticed that with when we started, and then when you got the other uh, the other the lens, lens, we're like, yo, yeah. bro, that shit's all insane. It's all yeah. intense. Yeah, the lenses make the biggest difference. Um, a lot of my Sony lenses are Sony G Master lenses. Mm -hmm. uh, most of them are. One of them's not the Sigma. That one right there. But um, it's just one of those things where like you know, it's like okay, Sony camera, Sony lens, bam, has yeah. to be together. You know. So I feel like um, again, it's caring about like the quality of of, of image that you have. And, um, yeah, like, I've always been Sony, Sony gang. And well, then, you know, Sony PS5s yeah. and shit like that. The Sony well, PlayStation. What's the, your favorite thing you have shot at Syndicate? Like, one moment that you were like, because I could <sighs> tell you mine, but I'll, you, I'll let you go first. But my favorite moment at Cindy. It's always, I always love the traveling stuff. Like, that's yeah. always dope. You know, like, 
having to travel for work, like, it's a sport, bro. And, like, having to carry your certain yeah. items or whatever, like, that's always dope. So I would have to say when we travel. Yeah. Like, because it's, like, we get out of, like, our little box here. But what's, like, your favorite shot? Like, that you were like, oh, this was sick. Like, was it Coachella? Mm, I think it would have to be the New York one when I flew the drone over the bridge and I thought the drone was going to fly over. That I was, was like, hard. I remember when we went to the fucking, uh, we were in Brooklyn when we went to go. And it was funny because fucking Brandon was just riding by. We was chilling there. And, bro, the way the shot came out was fucking nuts. Not yeah. yeah. And, I, and I feel like I've always been one to sacrifice the drone. Yeah. Like, you know how like I, there's a there's a, a, new, a video of, like, the drone flying through the through the lava yeah. yeah um i've always been like if it goes down bro goes down it, i don't give a fuck you know it's like miami it's, 11 miami was too windy oh yeah it was too windy. too windy i just didn't want to like crash into someone's car like a or car something. yeah because then it'll be like yo you're like low-key liable you yeah. know so uh that was my thing and i was just like ah you know what i don't feel safe but if 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 the drone has to go down for the shot yeah. um i'm down i don't yeah. care 600 bucks when you, when you travel, do you always take the same gear, or is there like you know, oh, I'm going here, so I got to take certain like, things? Like, good question. Obviously, you can't take all this. Yeah. Good question. Yeah. Good question. Um, I have taken it, and mm-hmm. it's a pain in the ass because you have to like, it's a lot of, it's a lot of money, so you have to, you have to document it or whatever. Mm. But when I travel, I take the Sony, the Sony, which one is it? The, it's this one, the A7S3 for video with that same lens, and then I take the A7R with the big lens, which is that one for photos. So this one is a is a more photo. It's a, it takes it has bigger megapixels. Photos. Yeah, mm-hmm. so it ha- it takes better photos, and this one takes the best video. Mm-hmm. And these two, like one of them is just the older one, and then the the seven C is just a smaller one. Uh, but these two are my best, like video and photo. So I take two. The, the, that that setup and that setup, bam. And then the drone. And then the drone, yeah, the little pocket drone now. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people ask us for more like uh, going out content and stuff like that. Um, and it, but it's it's hard, you know, it's hard to like. To orchestrate it, to orchestrate it, and, it it and be like that. But it, it is fun. Like Coachella episode, I think was my favorite, and also the sh- the to me again, just me being a fucking New York lover, uh, the shot of my of my old building and the bridge. I literally oh, was yeah. just like, bro, this was perfect. Like it was just like to open the episode. Yeah. I think that was sick. Yeah, and I always think like you know like those shots. It's so funny because like you, t- it takes more work than what the actual shot is. You, the shot's only th- two three seconds, yeah. you know. But, like, taking out the drone, setting it up, taking it up, making sure you get that right shot, boom, 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 or having the gimbal move up and down or whatever. It's I think it's hilarious because it's, like, it's so much work for two or three seconds. No, but yeah. it makes all the difference. It's worth it makes it. it worth it. It makes even having a drone, like, and carrying it with you, like, it makes it, like, worthwhile. No, yeah, because even the Coachella episode, the way we did the podcast, we did it live. And I think we should do more live podcasts because I kind of like when they're interacting. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, we yeah. answered the questions in this last podcast last week that we did. Um, but I feel like getting the instant, like, flash questions was cool. You know, like, yo, do this, do that, blah, blah, blah. Like, go answer this. I think that's super sick. It could be something we do, like, maybe on a Saturday before we open type shit. We just got to get here a little earlier. Kind of like how y'all did that one mad early. Yeah, we did true, it at, like, true, 5 true. in the morning here, yeah. 8 a.m. Or for, there. like, special events. Yeah. yeah. I think that would be dope. But see, like, the, being open to do stuff like that, like, I'm always, like, all right, what do you guys want to do? All right, bet. And then I go to the lab. I figure it out. I test it out. And then we run it. And I know that one time, like, I didn't, I had a, we had a re- request access uh, for that one day. Yeah. And we had to put it on the store yeah. uh, channel yeah, instead like of the pod. Fucked, yeah. But it was just one of those things where it's like, okay, it's a hiccup. Learn the, as you go. We, yeah. yeah, we learn as we go and it's not yeah. going to happen again. All right, bet. Now we're ready for any future yeah, lives Yeah, that was the Coachella one, right? Or the Coachella one, yeah. Yeah. But you see, it, it's, it's, it's trial and error, bro. It's trial and error. All right. I had I had tested it out on my channel, but my channel already had the like, access. Yeah. yeah so exactly. it was one of those things where we live and we yeah. live and we learn. All right. So we'll take a little break and then we'll get back with part two. Are you ready? It's on? Yeah. Alright, right, guys. We're back. Can you explain the clap? I know what it is, but can you explain it? Alright, so the reason we clap is uh, on Premiere Pro, there's a way to synchronize all the audios together. So that clap captures all the audios from all the cameras plus the mics. So when it hits sync, it just syncs everything. That's why all the cuts are like perfect. Mm -hmm. And when people are talking, you could tell like they're, you know, like everything's synced up like to the middle of a second. So um, it's never failed me. And I broke the last clapper. So I got got this new clapper, a little sturdier one. Um, But yeah, I think it's cool because it's like, you know, action. I ain't gonna lie, I didn't know it served the actual purpose. So yeah. that's yeah. tight that it does. I thought it was just like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just like all right, let's get to it. Ah, nah, yeah. 
No, it actually it's actually pretty like you know Hollywood. Yeah. So I think it's pretty dope. It, All right. Pretty so cool. another uh, recording question is, you know how we carry the little thing to hear our voice pretty crisp when we're at the buying counter. Right. So how does Hollywood do it when they're acting? Uh, they have booms on top. Oh, word. They have uh, booms on top. The like, ones that they show. Yeah, they got, there's, there's a guy. Oh, I, the shit when the guy's carrying yeah, like that. I, so. I, don't know, I don't know their names. The huh. gaffer is the guy that like uh, does the lights. Mm -hmm. And then there's a the guy that with the audio, and they, he carries it over. Oh, so that's what it's for. Yeah, that's I what it's for. It's just like maybe shade or something. Nah, yeah. Uh, nah. Oh, there's people that do that. There's, yeah. there's people that have like the white thing with nah, the yeah. shade. Watch Babylon. Babylon right. is a 1920s. It, it's, it's a good movie because it's like, it's the 1920s when there were silent films. And then they show the development of like the, the dude goes to the first ever uh, talking film and then he gets on. He rushes to the phone because uh, Brad Pitt sent them to like, yo, go see this. Go see what everybody's talking about. This film film with sound. And he gets on the phone with Brad Pitt and he's just like, everything's going to change. And it just develops. It's a watch it like 10 out of 10 movie. Gotcha. And it just kind of reminds me of like the sh the shit we do here, and obviously like continuing growing and stuff like that. No, yeah, for sure. Is right. there like um like, oh, well, I guess let me rephrase the question. What's the like biggest production you've done so far? As far as like, has it always been something like this type of setup, or have you done something that's like bigger or like in a different landscape? Um, it, other than this, it was mm -hmm. like music videos. Um, like. But even then, like those are pretty, like it's kind of very similar to this. The yeah. difference between a, a, a live music video and this, mm -hmm. the cameras are uh, exactly the same, mm -hmm. pretty much. Um, the only thing is that you get an audio engineer. Yeah. So I don't mm -hmm. imagine me not having to worry about that. Mm -hmm. And like the mics and the speakers, it's like that's Manny's job. It's done. And I just set up the cameras nice. and then do the edit, you know? So I think that's the biggest difference is like with, with, uh, with uh, music videos, live music videos, you need a whole sound engineer to, to, to do that part. Um, which is cool because then you don't have to do that part, but then it sucks you have because you have to pay them. Yeah. Uh, so that's only double-edged sword. And then here it's like I'm a one-man band yeah. doing everything pretty much. One thing that I know is that you're very legit, like with yeah. the stuff you do, because I see um, like bigger people doing like like it, like that, like music videos and stuff like that, and I look at them like, oh, shit, we have all this shit at the store. But for me, it's almost like I don't want to say taken for granted, but I just I'm so used to it now that I'm just like, oh, it's Rob's production, you know, but it's like a legit full production. Yeah. And I think like um, especially when it comes to the cameras, like these cameras are expensive, you know, like uh, each camera, the body itself is three to four, three to four thousand dollars. Uh, the lenses go from two to three thousand dollars. And then the tripods, the memory cards, the K, like if you really put it all together, it's a lot of money that I spent. Uh, but again, I just I've, I, I was gathering these cameras like. Little by little, you know, at first I got my first camera, then my second, then the third, then the fourth, then a new one comes out. So you saw the old one. And I feel like I've always been like, I don't know, it's like a thing, like a cool thing to have, you know, like I feel like these are my babies. Um, I call them my money makers. So I feel like uh, each of them serve a different purpose. And um, I try to use all of them as much as possible. All right. Question. Your cameras or your puppies? Damn. <laughs> Damn. That's crazy. My cameras, bro. I'm sorry. Bro. Without uh, the cameras, I ain't making bread, you know? Like, you I mean, the puppies make it. bread too, you know? Yeah. But it's one of those things where, like, the cameras, bro. Like, yeah. they, they, they've, they've opened more doors. They've taken me more places. Um, they've allowed me to travel, you know, with you guys, with, with Luis and everybody. Like, I feel like it's like, I feel like the cameras, the content, the YouTube, like, that's just my life right yeah. now, you know? And I feel like I don't, I don't I, I I sometimes I sit back and I'm like what would I be doing if I if I'm not doing this I wouldn't want to be doing anything else like I, I would want to create content on YouTube continue to create content on YouTube whether it's for you guys for other people for myself um, I feel like to me that's where it's at and that's where I want to be and I'm a big believer like in Google as a whole like the company like what what they stand for the Google search the YouTube like that's all one big. Yeah umbrella i'm a big believer in them yeah so i feel like i'm invested in them because i am a youtube guy you know yeah. um what would be your dream project like My, what like like something like an artist a celebrity an actor like that you're like oh shit i'm really on this project like right. dream project and this is this I, I i talked to um i talked to nigel about this i told him hey bro I want, I, I told him, I don't know how, I don't know when, I don't know wh wh exactly how this is going to happen, but I always told him, I, 
there's going to come a time where we're going to do a documentary. Uh -huh. Like me and Nigel are going to hook up, we're going to link up, and we're going to do a doc of something or somebody or some like someone is going to sponsor this documentary and I want to bring him on. So I've always told him that. So, so I don't know when it's going to happen, but I think that like just filming a documentary with my homie Nigel, I think that shit, that that's going to be like it. All right. So that's the idea. What celebrity would you like? Like, let's say you, you had a chance to document anybody and you're like, all right, this is going to be a documentary. Who would you want that documentary to be? Anything, Damn. anybody. I don't know. That's a tough one. I think it would have to be, like, maybe something in, like, the sports world that we pre pre that could be pretty dope. I, I love sports. Um, like a fighter or? Like, like but what person? Just, like, yeah. you have to name one. Like, you <sighs> five people show up, and they're, like, your favorite people of all time. But you have to pick one guy, and they're like, oh, we, we're, we want your services for this amount of time. Like, imagine you... Your favorite dream job came in and they asked you, like, yo, fuck Syndicate right now. Like, let's do this. And I was like, yeah, go do it, Rob. Like, it would have to be, like, I, would, I think it would have to be something in, like, I would have to, it would have to be something with, like, the NFL. Like, an NFL player or, like, hmm. something. Like, a, a NFL, because I, I'm a big NFL guy. So, like, versus somebody like hard knocks. Like, hard knocks hit you up and was yeah. like, yeah. Or, or, like, oh, follow Tom Brady the last year. Yeah. You know, something like like a, like a last, last dance. dance. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. Boom. Hard. Easily. Like, it would have to be, like, a football player, like, a go, you know? Someone that, like, I can look up to, like, yo, this this is this project, I can't say no, you know? Technically, you're filming the last dance for Syndicate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so we got one year and, uh, I don't know, three months left, so. I don't know, it's an idea. It's an idea. It's still an idea. But, no, yeah, that's good. Like, NFL, because, like, I don't know who I would, like, my dream job would be. Like, as in, like, with celebrity and stuff like that. Like, if I could, like, be an actor or something. I I don't know. I don't know who I would do. Yeah. And it's, I, it's, a, it's a hard question, so I get it. But the fact that you know kind of like the NFL, like... Yeah, because there's there's a, there's a content creators for the NFL. Yeah. Uh, and they have all these same cameras, and they sit on the sideline, and they create they create the reels, like they get the catches and no, stuff like that. One of my uh, homies, actually, I didn't even know he did that. I would always, We would hoop together, and I would always see him at Downey LA Fit. Um, and then um, randomly, I, we, I finally followed him. Uh, I guess I found stumbled into his Instagram. And I was like, oh, shit, like, he'd be fucking taking all these photos and doing all this thing. Something I didn't even know. I just thought it was like, oh, I, we hoop together here and there. We see each other at the gym. But I was just like, but damn, you're a real, like, content creator. Yeah, and, and that's smart for, like, the like NBA, NFL, any of those, like, 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 leagues. It's smart to bring people like us, like, small creators or whatever. Because at the end of the day, that person's photo or video or reel or whatever like it might hit or, or someone else's in the crowd might hit, you know? So it's one of those things where like, I feel like our jobs as like content creators or w whatever we do, I feel like more, it's, it's, it's only going to become more and more popular yeah. because it opens up more and more windows, you know? So I feel like, um, for me, I, I, I just like, I, I like to believe I'm a student of the game. I like, I like to sit through content, like feel, like see what I like, what I like, I save or I send it to like my other Instagram so that I can always have it as like a, like a, you know, it's a, it's in my little library. Take a that library, I store. yeah, up and down. Yeah, because yeah, so. you always say um, you don't care like when somebody reposts your stuff or takes your thing because it's technically still your content, it's branded and everything, but anybody, somebody else can make it go viral. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And then my main thing is like to have like a watermark. That's why I always want to have the, the store syndicate. credit yeah. like logo because at the end of the day. I don't care who takes it, bro. You guys, I don't care if you're big, you're small. I don't care if you're trolling. I don't care, bro. There's yeah. no such thing as bad publicity. So whoever grabs my content or, or your guys' content, whatever, and makes it go viral, bet. that To me, that's the biggest flex. Yeah. Like, damn, that fool grabbed mine. He, and he mixed it. He remixed it or whatever. Cool. For sure. Like, I'm down with that. You know, because that's, to me, that's what it's all about. Yeah. Wow. What's the biggest, like, um obstacle like with content creation for you personally not I like think, in general i think sometimes uh we get to like we get used to like doing like kind of like the same routine where it's like um i, I always feel like i want to challenge myself and i think I've, i talked to you about that like we're like oh damn now i gotta do more work like fuck it now i gotta do more work because it's always challenging it's always like it's always innovating the game is always changing so it's kind of like Keeping up with the game. Huh. Like, oh, you want vertical content? Bet. We're going to give you vertical content. Oh, you want drone content? Bet. We're going to give you drone content. Oh, you want podcast? Bet. Here's a podcast. Here's the clips. Here's a teaser. And it's all more work for me, but it's cool because it's like, that's what's required, bro. And that's the, the my job title. Like, I don't have one, but 
the game is always changing, so you always have to be able to change with the game and whatever the industry wants, just feed the algorithm that and then, you know, always be like always always wonder what's next. Yeah. And it's like keeping up with the game, I guess you could yeah. say. Do you ever hit like I know it happens to me and Skinny does too, like where he he we talk about it, but as a content creator, which is different from what we do, like as in like on our personal like job uh, occupations do you ever hit like a creative block where you're like oh fuck i don't know what to do with this sometimes sometimes i do but i think the best thing to do is just put the content out regardless because there's always going to be a next vlog there's always going to be a next uh, a next podcast so i feel like you kind of have to just get over it and whether it comes out good or comes out bad it's like oh damn that reel did good bet like let's try to make another one or damn that 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 vlog did did bad all right why did it do bad let's try to figure out go through the comments what are we doing right what are we doing wrong so it's always like analyzing your content and just like not being not being uh shy or not being afraid to just put it out there, yeah. you know, because at the end of the day, the people are going to de decide, do they like this? Do they not like this? Is this a viral clip? Is this not a viral clip? You yeah. know, so I think it's just um, just learning from like your content and and being able to analyze it and sit, sit, to, sit there and see what the audience likes, yeah. you know, um, on a question. I never asked you this one before. How'd you meet Nigel? Because you you were like pretty adamant of like how he's like you're essentially like a role model in this like industry for so you so we met nigel i believe the same year 2021 when i was on tour uh -huh. um i one of my homies he went to go do like a music video with them and like after the fact like we he introduced me to him at our warehouse or whatever and ever since then like i think it's like the passion like the nerds like kind of collided and yeah. then he tested me out or he just we were having a conversation about content and algorithms and how things work and i think he's seen that like yo like this guy's fucking into this like he actually takes the time to sit down and analyze like you know nug boy content yeah. and try to like bring, bring that for like make my, make it my own and um i think he appreciates that yeah. like as a creator like he he was the one that taught me like yo bro let's build community like you maybe i could teach you something he could teach me something and the again the game is always changing so you want to have people like that where you could just call at one o'clock in the morning and be like hey bro uh, did you see this new style of video did you see this new style like this new like i don't know if you guys seen it where it's not vertical video like this anymore. It's like they make you flip your phone yeah. from this to this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like I, I this happened like a month ago and the algorithm just fed it to me. And I was like, hey, bro, the algorithm's telling me <laughs> this is the new wave. Like, let's jump on it. Let's try to let's try to figure how you could do your thing, you know, with this new style. And I'll do my thing with this new style. So I feel like um, he's always been the one to like. Be, like say hey bro let's work together let's brainstorm he's came to my house and like he's helped me out with like content you know so i feel like having that people like that in your corner and and again i do that i do the same thing with our customers like they'll come and ask me questions whether it be camera questions video questions or whatever and i'm an open book yeah i've given the homie a free camera yeah. like here you go bro here's a free camera like who does that like i just said in my mind if he really wants to learn here you go bro go learn go yeah. learn with this you know, instead of spending three thousand, a thousand bucks, this is free. Go learn with this, and then if you have any questions, hit me up. Yeah, I know he does. So I, I see him will come in all the time, and you yeah. have like a thirty-minute combo with him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then it's like other, even other, other people have hit me up, um, and they've told me, "Hey, let me help you set up." Like they want to learn how to uh -huh. do this, um, and I think I might take him up, bro. Like I'm like, "Hey, bro, I can't pay you, but if you want to do this for freezy, like yeah. come help me out." Like, all right, bet. But it's just one of those things where, like, just like Nigel wants to build community, I also want to build community. I feel like since he's helping me out, I feel like it's, it's I, I should also help people out, you know? Without, I don't look for anything, bro. I don't ask for anything. I don't, like. You just do it because you love it. Exactly, yeah. 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 Um, going back to that whole thing of, like, doing it for free, I think people forget that sometimes you have to work for certain things. <laughs> like, we were interns for six months, you know? Like, sometimes we would get wouldn't get paid the best or something like that. And I see a lot of, like, my peers have that trouble where they're like, oh, that's too low. Like, oh, that's not enough for me. But it's just like, why not just take the job, kill it, and grow with the company? And I think a lot of people don't understand that. Like, sometimes you have to make a small sacrifice to become better. No, yeah, exactly. And even, like, um, Nigel, like, he would all... Now, Nigel would hit me up and he would be like, hey, bro, like, is it cool if I use your warehouse? I'll shoot you, like, 100 bucks. And I'm like, yeah, sure, bro, pull up. Mm -hmm. And I would get to, like, sit there and nerd out with yeah. him. So, like, yeah, he would use our warehouse for the low,
but I would I was able to like learn from him. I would I would come with questions yeah. like, hey, why do you do this? Why do you do that? The lighting, the this, the that. And I used I, I not used them, but like I was able to use his knowledge and he was able to teach me a lot, you know? So it's like a give and take, you know? Yeah. Hey, mm-hmm. come use my spot. I learn from you, you learn from me. Yeah. All right, bet. No, it's like a relationship that works. Exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bro. You know, I was looking uh, at you like uh, I was my bad. I just like went blind. Nah, you're good, you're good. No, nah, but that's dope because that's how things should be. Like everybody just like not that you're gonna get something out of everybody, but you learn from a lot of these experiences or even like I think that's one thing, like even us talking about being the interns, like it taught us like we may have been stressed out at sometimes or frustrated by it, but it taught us a lot of character. And even like what Chris is talking about, like some people not wanting to take jobs because they're starting off low. But it's like you're not even giving it a chance to see you might end up liking the space. You might end up growing with whatever position you have there. And you, if you're not doing anything or even if, um, you know, you just want to kind of get out your comfort zone, things like that or what kind of brings that out of you. And it'll let you really know, like, all right, this is for me or this isn't for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's one thing. And also, like, I think emphasizing that like we're always students like we never know everything like always being able to ask questions and feeling comfortable that like no question is a stupid question even if it's like something you don't want to answer but it's like you know like that's the only way we continue to learn and grow as people we help each other out and that community like that shit means a lot you know i think i I was gonna (laughs) say i think some people are afraid or embarrassed to say like, oh, no, I don't know about that because yeah. they, they're like, oh, this guy knows all about this. So I should know all about this, you know? But to me, all the time when somebody's like, even like with movies, like a lot of people oh. ask me certain movies I haven't watched or certain things I haven't done. And I'm just like, oh, no, I've never been there. Oh, no, I haven't watched it. Oh, no, I don't know. I, I don't know. Can you remind me? Even customers, when they DM us for like certain shoes, yeah. I'll literally be like, yo, send me a picture because I sometimes don't remember. And I was just like, yo, show me what you're dealing with or like, show me what movie or show me what you're doing. But I think a lot of people just in general are scared of like that secondhand or firsthand embarrassment of like, fuck, like if I tell this guy, like, I don't know how to do this, he's going to look at me different. It's just like, no, bro, like learn, you know, do something about it. Like, I think like I'm always learning every day where I'm just like, oh, I don't know this, like fucking Danny and Simon. If I don't have that conversation with them in December, which was the first quarter of us opening, and they're like, yo, bro, don't forget your sales tax. Like, you got to do this, this, and this. If I don't have that combo right now, we're a couple million dollars in debt, you know? And yeah, nobody knows it. that. I feel that, I feel it. No, yeah, and for me, like, it's even, like, learning from you guys, like, the, sh- like the shoe stuff, you know? Yeah. Like, I'll ask them questions. I don't care. Like, yeah. you, you guys troll me all the time. Yeah. I, I don't know it, bro. Like, yeah. I, and I, gen- I genuinely want to learn, like, oh, what shoe is that? Or this, that, and the third. Or, like, how do you, like, the spotting fakes and yeah. stuff like that. Like, mm-hmm. to me, like, I'm just, like, at this point, I, I could probably spot a fake when it comes in or whatever. But um, I've learned so much from you guys because you guys teach me. You yeah. know, oh, it's like wanting to learn. You're not like a culture vulture or anything. You're just like, oh, like I genuinely fan now. You're not just like, oh, I don't know what this is. No, nah, yeah, exactly. And and yeah. I appreciate these these items. Yeah. You know, like these shoes for what they are because again, they all have a story. They've they've been around for a while. Whether it's five years, fifteen, twenty years, you know, I still think like, damn, like the Supremes have held up. Like that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. And then and I'm telling you, when you said they were worth like three hundred bucks, I'm like, damn, <laughs> that's crazy. Like that's it. Like just three hundred. Like. I the bet, MSD you know, well. like I, I, I saw him sell them for more, but <laughs> these are, co- these but are I, cookie but pack. This pair. These are cookie <laughs> pack, you know. But I think a lot of people with me don't know if I'm trolling or if I'm being for real because I deliver it the same way. So not sure. No, that's why, that's why every time I ask you stuff, like, I just take a dead ass. I'm like, oh, he's dead ass serious. You know, it right, it happens a lot even with this podcast. Like people hit me up and like, yo, bro, I want to do this. And I'm like, bet, pull up, 11. And I say yes. it's so easy that it almost seems like, oh, this was not serious. Like I had that combo with Vern. Uh about him hey he's trying to help us out like do projects in here with like the people he works with and stuff like that and i just said bet pull up bet i'm down but he literally told me he's like bro you say that shit so calmly and so like eh that i don't think you're serious and i was just like nah bro like i take everything serious i'm down to work with people i'm down to do certain things like even uh we're finally doing the all-purpose thing which was two weeks ago from when this is airing or a week ago um and same thing with Matt and uh, uh, mm-hmm. fucking Leonard. Yeah. I, I I said it like, yeah, I'm down. Like, we'll do it. And then they're just like, you're not serious. You're not going to pull <laughs> up. And I'm just like, we are, bro. Like, if I'm not going to pull up, like, somebody else will, but I'll make it happen, you know? And I think a lot of people 
mis again misinterpret me like you i told you oh, 300 i said ah oh, 300 star credit i think i said some dumb shit like that like so easy but you took it like what the fuck <laughs> i went back home and i looked at them i was like damn that's it that's crazy <laughs> that's yeah, crazy yeah, that's, yeah. Right. From it. that's what it is bro that's a that's the market all right but nah but going even going back to that like i feel like people are used to things being more complicated than they are to where when you just say something like oh yeah let's do it it, it's not complicated like it's just i think with me with life i'm convenience i'm yeah. all about like convenience like i want to live here i want to do this i want to do that i want to not waste my my breath i want to like i'm straight to the point no gimmick like how you said it's just like bet i'm down it, but it's boring but that's just the way i am you know like if i could live a mile radius like in new york i used to literally live like a two mile radius and i would just do that lap every day work sleep gym work sleep gym work sleep gym and but if to me it was the convenience part where like oh like we me and him lived in the bronx for i lived for two years almost yeah it was like two years yeah. two years but that shit was inconvenient it was nice and it was cheap it was a really nice spot but just to me i was just like all right i'm spending an hour on the train i was like i could do so much in that hour again even the car mm -hmm. i went back to gas because the tesla was technically saving me money but it wasn't saving me time. Yeah. So I was just like, I'd rather fucking fill my shit up in two minutes than sit here for an hour and an hour and 30 minutes and charge. But it, it sounds stupid, but I just want to do certain, so much more, you know? I always tell people that I'm like, I always say I don't do shit, but then sometimes I realize I'm like, fuck, I'm always fucking busy. Yeah. I was just like, but I was, in my head, it's so. It's so me, effortless. It's so effortless that yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm not doing shit tonight. I'm not doing anything. But then I'm just like, Fuck, I got to go a hike. I got to go to the gym. I got to go to play a basketball game. I got to do this for syndicate. I got to go to a soccer game. I got to do this. And I'm just like, holy shit. I'm you actually, got a whole day. <laughs> I got a whole day. Like Wednesdays is technically a day off, but Wednesday is looking my busiest day because I run all the errands, do the payrolls, uh, make sure that like the money's going this way, that way. And But people don't see that because they just think Albert's oh, just at home. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but, Took a day off. Yeah, but like, how do you? So, how? Because I know you work very long hours from first time and experience. How do you manage that? Like your girlfriend, your puppies, like the content. Like, how do you manage all this? That's a really, really good question. Um, you know what? And it all. I think it all comes down with, like with my girl. Um, obviously her dad helps us. My girl helps me a lot. Um, to the point where like, I low key, bro. Like, I'll be at home. I'll be grinding, 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 and she'll be like, "Oh, dinner's ready." And then I'll just go and like have like a 15, 20 minute dinner, 30 minute dinner with her and then back to the lab, you know? Yeah. And it's it's one of those things where like, I think she just backs me up to the point where like, okay, I know what he's doing. He's working. He's not fucking around. Like he's actually like doing something. <laughs> so she doesn't, she doesn't give me a hard time. But I think like what's been killing me right now is like the, the home stuff as far as like we need a new roof. <laughs> um, that's gonna happen Wednesday. We need two new bathrooms. That's gonna happen like in the next two or three weeks. Like those little home improvement stuff. Yeah. That's the one that's like fuck. Like all right, but like now I have to call people, do that, like do that whole deal or whatever. Um, so I think that's what's been. I, I do run myself thin, but it's like my my girl helps me out. My mom obviously helps me yeah. out. Like she makes food for me sometimes and stuff yeah. like that. So like. I think it's my family, bro. They're the ones that really hold me down, you know? And again, it's my girl, bro. Like, she she allows this to happen, you know? And not allows it, but, like, she doesn't bust my balls. She does... When I'm here and we run 12-hour shifts or whatever, because I live an hour away and I have to run a 12-hour yeah. shift or whatever, she's not tripping. I'll get home late. She's not tripping. I get home and I start... I, I get home from a long day here and I go straight into work. Yeah. She's not tripping. So, yeah. like, I feel like um, just having someone that, like, accepts your work, like my workload, because I do work a lot and I don't think I'm a stop. So it's like one of those things where like that helps a lot, bro. You know, yeah. having her just like hold hold stuff down at the crib while I'm working like that. Help, that helps a lot. One thing I did notice is that she actually helps you out a lot, too. Like when you travel, when she went to Coachella, she, you were like, yo, she's down to cook breakfast for us. She's uh, yeah. down to help out with this, blah, blah, blah. Like, nah, she knows. She knows what's up, bro. She's she's like a very like. I don't know. She knows that, like, like, uh, like, yo, if I need your help, I'm gonna need your help. And she's no gimmicks. Like, she knows what she has to do, you know. Um, so sh shout out to her, bro. For real, like, she really like, uh, like, whatever I need, like, she's there. And to the point where, like, I'll tell her like what I want for dinner, and she's boom. And yeah. she'll she'll do a full eight hour shift at Verizon, yeah. and she'll still come home, cook dinner, hold it down, 
and wash the dishes while I go back to yeah. work. So it's sure. like, yeah. it's crazy. I, I'm I'm low key like spoiled, bro. Yeah. Like I don't do no Costco runs. I don't do I don't do no grocery stuff. I just show up. Yeah. I just right. show up and and stuff's there and it, it works, you know. Yeah. Um, and then now to the puppies because I I got a puppy from you. But now she's, just, I guess, at the age where she just doesn't do anything. Like, she <laughs> lost her, like, energy. Like, it's still there. But I just, like, how do you do it? Because, like, with me, sometimes when Cindy was, like, smaller, she's still barely going to be a year. But when she was younger, bro, I, I had a headache sometimes where I'll just be like, bro, stop moving. No, you know what it is? Uh, it is what <laughs> I learned with dogs. Um, if you have a few of them, two, three, four, whatever, five. Um, they become like a like a crew, uh-huh. like a clan, you know. And like the older ones teach the younger ones how to act. Uh-huh. Um, that actually like does work. I seen Caesar Milan talk about that stuff, uh-huh. and like it shows that like it, 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 he gets dog. He said he got dogs from like Michael Vick's uh, whole thing or whatever, uh-huh. uh, the pit bulls and stuff. But uh-huh. he said that um, his older dogs at his farm or his house were able to teach those dogs like, hey, this is playtime. This is like a one on one like you know cuddle time this is like you know like stuff like they're 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 able to be reintroduced back into like like the world i guess you could say so even with like just managing a lot of dogs it's actually easier when you have more because they, the young the older ones teach the younger ones how to act yeah because i feel like that happened with cindy when i went to spain and i gave her to you and that was the first time that she met her whole like family yeah. essentially and then now so i'm like brother you're, you're literally the best dog ever like you don't do anything like <laughs> literally she doesn't do anything bro like i take her upstairs to my room i'm like yo come here uh-huh. she goes up to, to, to my room she, uh, if i'm not in my bed or if i'm in like in my little desk area she'll sleep in my bed but if uh if i tell her like yo like move she'll get off and she'll go to sleep on the floor and i'm just and then even like at 10 30 i'm like all right cool it's time to go downstairs and she'll follow me and go into her crate and i'm just like bro whatever happened at rob's house like worked <laughs> and like you know it's and you know what's funny it's not that i don't, I don't think nothing happened but like the she first just, like met the dogs yeah the, the first the hour dog. she had to get jumped yeah <laughs> like they jump her back into the clan like they chase her around they bite her they nibble like yeah. and nice. they were going like not that we're going at it but they were she was like having fun like she was running around and i think like once she went back to your house she probably was like all right like i'm chill like yeah. They they ran me through like ran me off the court pretty yeah. much you know so I feel like now she's chill but I, she should probably like perk back up yeah. soon you know like I don't know, it's been like three weeks bro and she's st- uh, it, I don't mind it because I'm like yo you're so easy to deal with now I mean the, you know it's one of those things. like now like before when I I told you when we would leave um, and I had a crater again because I'm like oh I'm gonna go I'm gonna be gone grocery shopping for an hour or something so I would crater now she's running around the house. Here and there, she'll, like, fucking grab toilet paper and throw it all over the house, but that's not a big deal, you know? And, and I think that's the thing with our dogs is, like, we don't crate them all the time. We crate them when they go to sleep and they take their naps. Yeah. So their naps are at noon and their sleep is from, like, 10 to 8, you know? And I think after that, they're just free roaming. Yeah. Like, we let them run around. Like, I don't know if you notice, like, like the dogs in Mexico, there are a lot of stray dogs and a lot of people have their dogs off their leash. Yeah. Because they taught the dog that, yeah, bro, it's cool. Just follow me. Yeah. You know, and... um. Out here, we teach them to be on a leash, so I feel like they feel like restrained. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I feel like it's one of those things. As soon as they get off the leash, they want to bounce. Yeah. And the Mexico dogs are like, nah, they're just I'll chilling. I'll follow you. Yeah. yeah, I'll follow. I'll be right here chilling. And it could be a pit bull. Yeah. It could be you know a Frenchie. It could be any kind of dog. So I just feel like it's all like how you take care of them and how you like bring them around the world. Yeah. So for the people that don't know, how many dogs do you have? I think I have like five. Five. Five dogs. I have two more puppies. What's up? Where we at? <laughs> <laughs> You yeah, have the two the brown squad. ones? Uh, yeah, the ones that look like Cindy. Oh, the... The the, the, the uh, chocolate tans. Chocolate nice. tans. Yeah, get under good dogs. Uh, boy and a girl, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, Are you going to breed again soon? Uh, probably not. You know yeah. what? I think we, we, we're going to like... That's it. Yeah, chill that's it. That's it. We're going to chill. Yeah. No, yeah. Um, it's a pain, bro. And like low key, like my girl wants to have a baby, so I don't know. But it ain't going to be soon. Yeah. I got to get married first, so maybe in the next two weeks. Your two wedding's three. next year, right? What happened? Your wedding's next year? Uh, I think we're gonna push it to 2025. Damn. Damn. Yeah, but so I'll let you guys know. You're you guys pushing know. the baby back too. So yeah, like exactly. That's crazy. <laughs> that's why you're pushing it back. You're like, no baby. No it's baby. funny because she was like, "Yo, we have to." Get, she texted me and said, "Yo, we have to get like married by law or whatever." Yeah. And I was just like, "Damn, I'm having cold feet. I don't know. I don't think I want to do this <laughs> anymore." <laughs> I was like, "I'm kidding, J.K." All right, what's next for you? What's next? You know what? That's a good question. Um, you know what? Obviously, bro. Like, I'm here with you guys, so. I really want to focus my 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 work here with you. If little side gigs pull up, um, that'd be cool. 
but I don't want to do anything too crazy because I don't want to lose my focus here. And again, I think we talked about this last time where I was just like, yo, I got to do more work. I got to do more work. And I feel like the work's never going to stop. Um, but as of right now, I just feel like my attention needs to be here with you guys, with the vlogs. Uh, my schedule revolves around like this work, you yeah. know? And even, even though I'm not here, I'm at home editing and that's still like work for you guys, you know? So I honestly want to say like, I'm just here until we're here. So that's one year and three months guys. So is there a, an event or a trip that you would like? want be like oh bris bris should do this because i want to go here like a pop-up or like a oh, city I, that you want to hit like what there's one like if you had to hit one city you're like yo like a lot of people hit me up from here you should do this if there was something i wanted to do with you or like the, the store like the store like the store? i'd have to say like a euro trip a euro trip like a london this or that or like something like, yeah. if, it has to make sense yeah but does it make sense like nah yeah. but if it's make if it makes business sense we've already did miami oh, yeah. we already did new york so that's like I mean, we go back to those cities or Chicago or whatever. That'd be dope. But like, I feel like a Euro trip, like whatever, London or Paris or whatever, I think it would be like epic. I think domestically, we just got to do like Chicago or like more middle America. But I don't, like pop up wise, I don't know, because that's what the that idea with the mystery box. I had told DC I wanted to do a pop up in New York and sell everything super cheap, just kind of like get people on the brand and stuff like that. But then I was just like, that's not fair to the rest of the country. So I was just like, let's just do a mystery box instead because then new york is just going to get all the love the mystery box was crazy because it was like all over like yeah literally all over the fucking country people were eating up which was tight. yeah so then now i'm just like all right cool we did new york we did miami obviously we have the store here texas. and i was just like texas might make sense for chicago but then euro too like somewhere you know london the people that want us in london because the last time I went, uh, these last two trips that i went london and spain i didn't take no merch normally i take something to give out every time i go to new york Take a like ton of hats, give them out to everybody. Um, but this last two times that I've gone, I haven't taken no merch, which definitely I should. I don't know. Maybe we'll do London. Not too sure. One thing I think that I think would be dope, just throwing it out there. I think whatever if if we could do it or not. I think if it makes sense to take like a little road trip, like I don't know, put everyone in a van together and drive a few hours together. You're probably gonna hate each other, but I think recording that, like, I think that'd be fun. I don't know. I mean, technically, we could do that again next year for Coachella, where we just do it more in depth. Yeah, like we all take like a van or something. Well, yeah, I feel like this year, since it was like Andy's first time, it was just like so screwed up. Throw the blender. Like it was just, it wasn't like screwed up. It was just like a blender. Like it was just like everybody just kind of like yes, but next year it would be more controlled. Where we're like, oh, you know what? We could just make it a whole like a real thing, and then maybe actually even instead of selling the merch, maybe actually just do a real pop up or something. You know, like it could just get more detailed but obviously i don't know it, you know with me it's just like idea the one time and then boom like that's it it's cool. nah yeah i feel that i feel that. yeah another coachella th uh, a coachella like uh well we're gonna experience. do that for sure again next year but yeah i think yeah there's a ton of shows at the end of the year but they're just like small shows nothing crazy nothing like that like eventful like that Nah, I feel it. I feel it. Nah, in Coachella, to me, bro, I haven't, be, I haven't been to a festival in a while. And it was, like, refreshing. I remembered why I loved it. And, and I also remember it. why I hated it. Yeah. So, it's a lot it's, of work. It's one of those bro, things where it's, like, it's um, it's, it was good, bro. Yeah. It was good. Um, all right. Last question. Out of all the characters that you have developed, because we're all characters, essentially. All right. Who's your favorite one? Who's my favorite Like, who character? do you like fucking with on camera? Like, you're just like, all right, like, this is hilarious. Um, Let's see here. Honestly, bro, I have to say Manny, bro, because he's pretty funny. <laughs> like, the sh <laughs> I don't even have to, like, guide it. Like, he'll just come out of left field, and I'm like, what? And I just have to record him, and, he and he's just hilarious, bro. I really like Manny, like, Manny's personality. Manny's, like, the funny guy, you know? Yeah. So I feel like he does his job sometimes, so. He makes my heart complete. <laughs> cool. All right. And then uh, can you tell everybody where they can find you at and then close it out yourself? All right, guys. So you can find me on every episode. I link all my stuff in the description. Uh, my my at is Rob88Films. Thank you. Thank you for all you guys that watch. Thank you for all your support. Everyone that likes the, likes the videos, comments. I really appreciate that. I am the guy that, behind the scenes. I am the guy that responds. Um, so as long as now the cat's out of the bag, you guys know that. But uh but yeah, thanks guys. Thank you guys for having me. Peace out, y'all. Laters. Peace. Hello.